and your spiritual ascension. But basically, what happened was, I went through about a month where I was learning how to use my ability to see visions from the future. I know it sounds a bit like one vision from the I got more than one ability, it's not just astral projection that I do. It's not more important that I'm able to teleport and bilocate and levitate and move mountains at will. That's not what's most important to me, because my soul knows that's easy. It's not hard at all. It's absolutely easy. And I'm laying there, and then I just, I just slide out. You know, it's like little to no effort needed to do it this time. <laughs> and I slid out of my body. It's not hard at all. It's absolutely easy. <laughs> and I slid out of my body. And I remembered going upstairs uh, into my room, this room. <laughs> <laughs> so everything went black. I ended up materializing in my brother's house. Only it was at a specific point of time when I was a child. Because my soul knows that's easy. It's not hard at all. It's absolutely easy but I'm blocking myself because that's not the reason that I'm here. That's not the purpose of me being here. I don't need to prove it to anyone or myself to feel good about who I actually am. All of a sudden, I start seeing more visions, you know, which is kind of weird because a lot of people out there who don't understand astral projection, they tend to, to think that it's nothing more than something that's going on inside of our heads. Our thought waves are connecting. <laughs> I feel the vibration. <laughs> Me too. But when you actually slide out of the body and experience what it's like to be a disembodied consciousness outside of the physical vessel, and then you're able to have a set of memories outside of the body. You're able to experience altered states outside of a physical body. It kind of puts things into perspective because I meditate. You know, I get into altered states all of the time in this body. I know what it's like. I've been doing it for years. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. <laughs> <laughs> so for someone like that to come to me and say isn't it just in your head that's not only incredibly naive but it's like they're calling me stupid <laughs> you know as if I can't tell the difference it's kind of a shame because I know for a fact that if they're thinking like that then there's like no way them to astral project. I'm going to 
we're just gonna have to wait, right? We're just gonna have to wait until something happens to them where they see or experience what it's like to slide out of the body. Boom, I ended up back here all the way in the Philippines and it was raining really hard. And so I wanted to go to the top of our roof in our condo. So I flew up to the top of the roof and I saw this guy standing at the edge of the building. And I was wondering, you know, is this guy gonna jump off and kill himself and you know, commit suicide? And I wasn't sure what was going on, but I wanted to do something. And so I flew right through his body like whoosh. And then he moved back with the reaction like, whoa, what was that kind of reaction? As though me going through him affected him somehow. And there were other parts of the OBE as well. But anyway, then I came back to my body and when I got up, I was crazy excited. And I'm like, oh, I want to project again, you know, and have another experience. Suit yourself. If you need me up, uh, um. <laughs> and then all of a the sudden, this woman comes out of the wall, okay? Her skin is like really hydrated. I'm not gonna say oily, but hydrated. And it had no pigmentation whatsoever. Her hair was like silver, but the strands were thicker than normal. Her eyes were pretty much white, not fully white, like Storm out of the X-Men, but the, the color of the eyes, they were silvery white, you know? You could see that they were there still. It's not about the mind. Waves and ocean is the mind. It's not about the mind. It's about who you are right now. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <sighs> Who are you? <laughs> really? That's, yeah, so Doesn't make sense to. Do you get what he's saying? <laughs> Does anyone get it, or is he just crazy? <laughs> No, it's crazy, but I do get it. A part of me gets it. A part of my, my, my infinite self, or whatever you want to call it, my moment out of time, my unknowing. <laughs> Who are you? You think you are that? You thought so. You thought so. She dematerialized, or oh, better put, materialized herself through a dematerialized space you know, where my window used to be. She just walked on through. And she basically told me, hey, Ryan, I know what you've been doing, okay? I'm gonna show you a way to do it better. I'm gonna teach you something, something that the people within my dimension do all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teach you something, something that the people within my dimension do all of the time. This meditation is really the totality doorway. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. I am being a violent tire, I am the purity God desires. Yeah, they were like Jehovah's Witnesses, only they brought prizes. She mentioned as to how there are all of these parallel universes, loads of them, and she was able to freely, willingly materialize herself in any plane of existence that she wanted to. Not just her, but every member of her species. They had gotten to that point within their evolution where it was well, second nature to them. Heck, first nature to them. Easy. Yeah, okay, good for, good for you, good for you. <laughs> Who are you? She opened a hole within my room and she shows me her TV. Yeah, no, it's, it's nothing like our TVs here. The TVs that they have, 
are basically made out of light. It's more like a holographic projection, but it doesn't look sketchy or, or, or run down or, or like it's running on like a, a 2.0 software. Who are you? <laughs> Boom, I ended up back here all the way in the Philippines. Oh yeah, back to the same old place he's been a million times before. Boom. I ended up back here all the way in the Philippines. I have to say I'm disappointed in you, man. I am disappointed. Disappointed. Come on, man. Dear. Go somewhere you haven't... I would love... What? Wouldn't it be cool to go to Honolulu and... And she shows me her TV. Yeah, no, it's, it's nothing like our TVs here. The TVs that they have. A light shaped, a flat panel display monitor. Put one on the steering column, one inside of the glove box, one on top of the dashboard, two in back of the headrest, one mounted in the seat, two still in the packaging on the back seat. So like, friends go and sit on, break it. I can honestly say, I just don't give a. Do you care? And she said, what do you got to do? Is you got to feel the consciousness inside of your body. Okay. She said that what we do is we activate this field within our hearts, but it is not love. You will not understand or be able to comprehend what this feels like. It's not about the mind. Comprehend what this feels like unless you trigger certain energy points within your body, which then allow you to discover this frequency. Your eyes may be open or closed. Very soon, this will happen in every office, every hospital, every mental hospital, every prison. <laughs> In every office, every hospital, every mental hospital. <laughs> she was just saying that anybody can do this. Okay, pun intended. <laughs> any physical body and any person out there who's able to feel this frequency. So, I hop onto the frequency. In every office, every hospital, every mental hospital. <laughs> And then to my surprise, like I my eyes straight after, I felt kind of weird, not tingly, but smooth internally. And then that kind of stopped to a certain degree. But then it felt like there was this other frequency that was around me, which allowed my astral body to levitate. <laughs> it's not more important that I'm able to teleport and bilocate and levitate and move mountains at will. That's not what's most important to me. And you can turn it into a wormhole. Okay, now this explains a lot of things that I've experienced, especially when it came to a being that walked through my physical wall whilst I was in 3D. I wasn't even astral projecting. And she walked straight out. Okay, this was another experience I had. I want you to meditate. I want you to do the five Tibetans. 
I want you to do the meditation three times after the five Tibetans. I want you to do the five Tibetans three separate sessions, so three separate 21-minute meditations. I want you to say the Shakti prayer three separate times after the three separate uh, Tibetans with the three separate meditations. Go ahead and put in the uh, Shakti prayer there. Okay? I want you to look at the fabric that you're wearing or the or the the piece of clothing that you're wearing that represents the uh, sixth chakra and I really I really want you to get into the color. Okay. It was colored dark blue with pink coming towards the center and it would just spin all around her. And she came towards me and her energy field literally passed through my astral body. Who are we? We are as a being, we are a drop of this universe. We're dealing with the sixth chakra right here. Sixth chakra, also known as the third eye. The seat of intuition, the seat of the uraeus, which is when the kundalini comes up and over the head, it projects out of the sixth chakra. Sixth chakra also forms the basis for the inner corona. If I'm going to make more sense out of this, think of it like water. If I'm going to make more sense out of this, think of it like water, alcohol, alcohol, Coca-Cola, juice. What do they all have in common? They all have water, right? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> find myself floating past the door frame, under the door frame, towards my old room. I thought I was going to hit my head on the door frame, but luckily that didn't happen. Instead, my head went through the door frame. I passed into my old room, the one with the paint all over the walls. And the only thing that came about that practice was the fact that I was able to move my consciousness through a wall and through my door. And then by doing so, it actually allowed me to see what was on the other side. Hello, Newman. <laughs> In every office, every hospital, every mental hospital.